episode of what am I buying, where am I going? <laughs> I'm uh, headed to Nashville right now, uh, just outside of Na- Nashville, it's called Mount Juliet, to get a 7-3 excursion uh, that's supposed to be rust-free, has a little front-end damage, maybe a lot of front-end damage, but uh, should be sick. It's, um, it's from California, completely rust-free. So I'm kind of excited about it. It's got, you know, highish miles, I think mid, mid 200s for a uh, 7.3 though, that's really not much. So um, it's limited, loaded, one owner, exactly how you want to find them. So I'm in uh, my friend's Duramax, which is my grandfather's old truck. Got the trailer up and loaded and uh, we are southbound and down heading through Kentucky right now and uh, on the way to Nashville. So I, maybe I'll pick you up when I'm there. Uh, maybe I'll wait till I get this thing on the trailer, but uh, pretty excited about it. Talk to you guys soon. All right, long day. Uh, I think that video earlier was taken about noon, maybe 10 or 9 a.m., something like that. It is now uh, 9 p.m. And we have successfully picked up the new project. Make sure everything's still kind of tight, somewhat. So this is it. Rust free from California, 7.3 excursion that has some uh, light front end damage. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, you know, frame straight, that's good. Um, I don't know if you can see in here. It looks like the uh, axle was pushed back about an inch. So, if you guys know how a uh, leaf spring works, it should have the little keeper that goes into the hole on top of the axle. Um, so, this side didn't move, but, I mean, you can just see the, uh, Let me clean this camera here. Okay, so currently at a truck stop. I will say I've never seen a uh, any kind of a Ford this clean. So anyway, I got a call in the uh, middle of the video. So this is from California. We turn the got parking sensors, backup camera, hitch looks mint, 7 pin, 4 pin, 4 pin, but I mean, there's not a speck of anything anywhere. No rust whatsoever. I guess, me being in the northeast, usually this is rotted, and it's like brand new. So, the only thing that has been done is these two front seats have been replaced. Still leather, still heated, but they're just a little bit different color than these. It's got the uh, infotainment up there, I guess, or whatever you want to call it. DVD player. Here's the seat color, as you guys can see. But, uh, super clean. It's got airbags in it. I mean, it's just been done the right way, so I got to, uh, once I get this hood off and this fender off, I think I'll be a lot less bothered by it because it just looks so bad right now. I already had a lady try to buy it from me on the way here. I actually ran into a guy that had a uh, 16 swapped front end excursion. I'll, uh, I'll put in a clip or a picture of that and I talked to him and he's like, oh dude, it's easy. So that's what I think I'm gonna do, is do a new new swap on the front. Um, but the lady the lady pulled me over and she's like, hey, hey, you're not taking it to the scrapyard, are you? I was like, no. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm gonna uh, get this thing moving. We got about four hours till we're home. Hauling with my grandpa's old Duramax, which is now uh, one of my best friend's trucks that he uh, fully, fully restored, fixed all the rust on it, so. I'm glad that uh, still around here and doing work. 
so I guess I'll pick you guys up in the morning. I am uh, currently fasting, so I got some Gatorade Zero, zero calories, finally. Um, and uh, yeah, so I guess I'll pick you guys up in the morning when I get this thing unloaded, and we'll uh, assess the damage from there. Here I am, 8 a.m. the next morning. I got home at uh, about 1.30 last night. And I was basically hallucinating. <laughs> um, here is the truck with the hood popped. I have it parked sideways, so it's not this smashed, but. So I'm gonna try to get this fender off, the hood off, and then just start taking off all this plastic, stupid stuff in the front end here. And uh, just get a better idea of what I'm working with. Like I said, frame is straight. I mean, this bracket is bent a little bit, but you need to cut it right here for the facelift that I'm planning on doing. So, not a huge deal. I'm gonna uh, get cracking here and start pulling the front end off. All right, been hard at it for about uh, 20 minutes. Got the front end stripped off. The fender was hard to get off. But uh, so basically we can see where the primary damage is. It's right here, right there. And I guess just an overall push. It looks like that rail, if you can see right there, looks like this rail is pushed back, obviously. But I think this rail might be out straight. Um, I haven't started the truck yet because the fan is rubbing on the belt. It's all pushed up in here. So what I'm going to try to do is bring my excavator over here. And I think I'm going to try to pull, pull right here, pull out a little bit. Maybe, I don't know, find a decent spot to pull out just so I can pull it out enough so I can start it and make sure that this is worth my time because make sure it doesn't have blow by, I guess. That's one big thing. I, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to put all this work into a truck that's not worth it. So um, I'm going to try to figure out how to get set up here. Of course, the wheels are turned and it's just me, so... Gotta pull it back a little bit more and then come around with the excavator and pull forward. So I will pick you up when I'm doing that. Okay, so pulling it with the little excavator, got good progress. It's no longer, it was touching here, um, and now I got a gap in there. So I'm gonna try to start this really quick, just to verify no blow by before I put too much effort in it. I just put a battery in, um, I'm gonna clean up the tools real quick and then get her cranked. All right. There you go, my jump box. Got the NOCO hooked up to this side. Hopefully that's the issue.
No. It's not the issue. It's all the way in part. Okay, updates. Um, after a lot of messing around, I've been trying, I've pulled it out a good amount more um, to get some space in there. But uh, she's still got some more, more to go for sure. But uh, I could not get it started yesterday. It took me forever. I went through everything. I went through the starter. I tried to kind of eliminate everything. I went through the starter, ignition, um, the solenoids, the, um, well, I can't think of whatever the hell it's called. The, uh, the, uh, fuses, you name it. I just did everything and, uh, couldn't figure it out. I ended up just kind of bypassing that stuff. I saw a video on YouTube where a guy bypassed it. So in here, when I go to start it, just clicks, nothing happens. So you, and you go. You take this guy and touch it to positive. No smoke. Fires right up. No blow by, which is a big, big deal for me. Little vapor. But no blow by really at all. I think power strokes always have vapor. But uh, yeah, so I'm just kind of assessing the damage now. So, got her going. I'm not gonna run it too long because I don't even know if there's coolant in it. But uh, task at hand for today is gonna be pulling the cooler. Gotta pull the intercooler out, get all that out of here. Um, pull out the oil cooler. I wanna say it's probably a trans cooler. Just gotta get everything out of here um, to get me to the radiator. So I'm gonna pull that radiator and then really get Kind of like a, a look at the front end and see where i need to pull um so i mean fender on but you know keep a keep an eye basically so you have straight pinch weld and then kind of a straight piece you have this bracket here but that goes to the fender that that's part of the fender but you can see it's kind of flat here come over on this side crooked pinch weld and then right here we kind of have a cave so it needs to be pulled here pulled forward at the bottom this whole thing kicks back which on this side I'm assuming it does not kick back so I might pull this fender for reference just so I can know what I'm looking at but uh, yeah it's gonna start getting to work on it and uh, getting it straightened out. Okay, so I need to pull this whole part out. Have this hooked up here. Let's see. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get a shot of both. That straightened that out actually a decent amount. The bottom probably pulled forward a little bit more than it should, but I can always, yeah, it's split right here. I can hammer that back. So, it'll let a little off. Let me put it right there so we're just pulling that corner. There we go. Heck yeah, that corner looks great. Of course, you can't see anything because it's right in the shadow of the bucket, but that straightened right out. All right, I got uh, got that a lot more straight than it was. So 
I'm gonna work on straightening out this edge right here with uh, some wrenches. Had to do this plenty of times on all kinds of things. Just like that. I'm gonna keep cracking on this. Here's a video of how the uh, excursion sits so far. I just ordered $500 of parts of, for stuff up here. I ordered a conversion bracket kit. I ordered a fender, another fender, and a hood, grill, and headlights. So I just need to get two uh, plastic pieces ordered and uh, we'll be good to go. So I just gotta keep, I gotta pull this a little bit more. Um, I'm just waiting to get measurements from certain areas so I can, uh, I can know what goes where. Here we are again, day 700. Nah, probably like maybe day four or five or so, but uh, got everything torn apart. The old radiator's out, that was smashed. Um, intercooler was saveable, all that fun stuff. Got the new water pump on, ended up replacing this guy. The other one had way too much slop in it. Um, this has a tiny little play. I mean, the smallest amount, but I'm gonna replace it anyway because I don't wanna risk it. Um, all the rest are tight and uh, yeah. So I got a new radiator in the mail, new water pump. Um, I wanna say I maybe just got a whole new tensioner. I don't know, I just started ordering stuff on uh, Rock Auto. AC Delco on a Ford. Who is, who is this guy? What I get looks like a whole tension. Okay, so I got a whole new tensioner just because. What brand does this say? The dually? I don't know. Whatever. I got a whole new tensioner just for this pulley, so I'm going to uh, replace this guy real quick too. See what size that is. Does that look like a probably a half inch? Half inch, so 13 does it. I'll take that real quick. Had to get the battery on the old tool here. Really? It must be on there. Oh, I guess I had to charge this battery. Okay, progress is made. Getting bolts on. Uh, getting these four in. All these are tight. This is off the old one. I had to take the fan clutch off the old uh, the old water pump. Not a fun time. Had to put it in a vise. All that fun stuff. Um, so yeah. Gonna get all this tightened up and then I'm gonna start working on the belt. Here's a perfect example of check your parts before you install them. Loose, loose, tighten both these, listen. Hear that? It's rubbing right here. Taking that back off, putting the old uh, dually boy back on. This one feels way better. Okay, don't mind the mess, but I got the new radiator sitting in place, uh, the new fan in, on, belt on, pulley on. Um, I just want to reiterate something that AC Delco, I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be a Chevy brand, right? Junk, this part number, Rock Auto, complete junk, because it's, uh, I mean, you guys saw it. This is, this is like Amazon Chinese shit. Don't buy this. But uh, anyway, radiator set in, in place. I, we are going on a like a week-long vacation soon. So I'm trying to just kind of get stuff buttoned up here. So I don't have stuff laying everywhere. And then I'm going to be busy all day tomorrow. So 
Um, I still have to pull this. I have the measurements written down. This is 31 and 3 eighths. It's supposed to be from right here to the firewall. Um, 34 and 5 eighths is what this one's supposed to be um, from right here to the firewall. I have this one written as 34. And this one's supposed to be 39 and 3 eighths to the center of this hole over to there. And this one right here is actually dead on from here to over there. So I need to pull this out a little bit more. So as you can see, the radiator, assuming it's in its position, clears the fan no problem. But with the belt on and the upper radiator hose on, might be might be an issue. So we're gonna have to uh, cross that road when we get there. All right, I've been on vacation for a week and now it's freezing cold, but at least, uh, at least I'm back to work. So uh, one of the big issues here was this bolt right here snapped that held the leaf springs together. That ended up pushing the axle back about an inch and a half back. You can see where the tire was rubbing. Um, so I just got most of this dropped. I got to take off those four, four little bolts to hold on the front U joint, and uh, and the whole front axle is ready to come off. So this is how it sits now. Intercooler's back on, new radiators on, fan, all that fun stuff. Um, it's all good to go. I didn't put on a new shroud. I'll worry about that later, um, but. This side is all taken apart as well, so I just need to, uh, I guess you guys can see right there what I need to weld. Pretty, pretty simple stuff, I guess, right? You know? We'll figure it out. It looks like this side of the sway bar is bolted in place. It looks like this side of the sway bar was just hanging. So that's something uh, something different. Oh yeah, I guess it goes over the, the gusseting for the diff, so. All right, well I'm gonna uh, get these four eight millimeters out and uh, get this thing off here. Said it's cold out here. My beard and mustache are frozen. Anyway, got those four bolts out. I need to take off this brake line and that axle vent and uh, She's ready to rip. So maybe get the excavator started and uh, maybe I'll do a little cold start on that. this yesterday off the trailer from uh, Nevada as well. Beautiful MB. It's a 44. Not a lot of rust. Really good shape body-wise, frame-wise. So, it'll either be another project or it'll be something to sell to fund another project. I guess we will, uh, I don't know, we'll see. All right, let me get this axle out. Moderately sketchy. Now I gotta back the truck underneath that. Just like so. Make sure I'm not gonna break anything. Should be good. A lot of things have happened. Got the front axle back in. Um, you guys saw the front end put on. Added uh, about six gallons of coolant. Um, Took me forever to get it to bleed. Did an oil change, pulled this out a lot more, put on the McNasty uh, guards here, or the, I'm sorry, the McNasty uh, conversion brackets here. So there's this one and that one. Put them on just to make sure everything was square. So I had to pull this front out. This looks, it's about almost 90 right now. And that's exactly how this one is. It's 
a little a uh, little less than 90 and this one is a little less than 90 I could probably hit this in but uh, I've been driving it around uh, I think it's there's maybe a rock stuck in one of the calipers or the uh, rotors it's making a little bit of a kind of noise but um, yeah so she is mobile as of now um, still have to start it with the yellow wire so this key switch doesn't work I think because of the neutral safety switch so I've turned the key on right there walk out here take this guy and uh, put it right there sounds good no drama, no weird stuff. Rev's good. Shift's good. The only thing that I have noticed is that there is now, I guess was, since the wreck, there's a crack in the back of the transfer case. So I just uh, ordered another transfer case that should be here on Thursday, which is tomorrow. And, uh, I'll get that put on along with the uh, McNasty kit. So I guess I will probably just pick this video up when I get the other stuff in. It's been about a week since the last time I uh, recorded on this thing. Got the fenders, hood painted, grill on, whole front end on. Um, the hood obviously isn't down right now, but the body lines are all nice. Still need to put a front bumper on, but uh, that's kind of last priority. Pulled the front axle off, um, re-welded, I don't know if you can see it in here, re-welded that, you can kind of see the welds down there, that holds the track bar on, um, drove this about an hour home, and it was making the craziest like whining noise, I'll actually insert a clip now of when it's jacked up um, right now. So, now that you guys just saw that, <laughs> I uh, realized it needs a rear axle, so I pulled the rear wheels off, dropped the drive shaft, and uh, see if you guys can hear this. There's so much like, this feels like, first of all it feels dry inside. Second of all, I don't know if you can tell, it just, spinning this is not free or fluid. I don't know if you can see how it ratchets. This is, it, it's gross to even spin. So I'm gonna start uh, getting all the stuff off here and get this rear axle dropped, I guess. So let me get cracking on it now. All right, here's the plan so far. Got the rear axle picked up on the skid. We're gonna pull the truck out from underneath of it. Here's how it looks after the fact. Got this from a place called Phoenix Auto Parts. Good people over there. But I'm probably gonna take my brakes, throw it on. Uh, all my brake lines, I'm assuming. These look a little crappy, but I can just hit that with the grinder. So see how sketchy this goes we got the rear end swapped uh, I didn't I took a little clip which I'll insert uh, uh, but I didn't really get a, a, I don't know, a ton of shots of it because doing everything by myself kind of sucks so. all right guys I uh, have done a lot of work on the excursion and I think it's pretty much well it's almost done now um, Figured I'd give you guys a nice walk around video of it and uh, 
show you where it sits now. So I just got some new Cooper tires on it a couple days ago. Um, this is actually the original wheel that was for this front. Um, the other tire just got a big uh, gash in it. So I do need to get a, uh, a new hubcap there. But just got new Cooper Discover AT3 XLTs. I've had great luck with these tires. Um, I got the front bumper put on. I was trying to find a bumper forever. Even like salvage yards wanted like four or 500 bucks. This dude had this one and I guess you could buy them on eBay for 300, but they didn't come with any brackets. Um, obviously no lights. And you know, all this just a miscellaneous trim. I got this whole thing off Facebook for 20 bucks um, because it has a dent here, which honestly, I'm not too worried about that. I might just throw on a, uh, a ranch hand eventually. Not sure yet. Um, but you know, it still does need some stuff. I, I want to put an LED light bar in this gap down here um, to kind of take up some dead space. I still need to do some adjusting on the bumper. It was snowing like crazy when I was putting it on and I just didn't have enough time to, I just wanted to get it on, you know? So I need a Ford emblem. I want to do, uh, you know, a light bar here. And then uh, I guess, you know, to the sticklers, this side is an F-350 Lariat. And, uh, you know, if you go over here, this side is an F-250 Lariat. The cool thing is you don't see both sides at the same time. So, um, and then also the cowl, a lot of guys do the 2016 cowl conversion as well with a different wiper transmission. And I actually don't see why. So um, I'm just gonna put the original cowl back on. I just have to order some of these clips in. Um, I actually have them ordered, they just didn't come in yet. Um, I had Safe Light throw on a new windshield. Uh, there was actually like a nice, I don't know, 80 or $100 coupon online. Um, and that's about it for the front end to, to be complete. I did just order, I don't know if you guys can tell, but these tires sit back far compared to, you know, with this front end. I did just order these leaf springs kind of have like a, a negative arch to them. So I did just order four um, leaf springs because these, you know, the fronts are bad. So they raise it two inches. The backs are four inch springs, but you take out the two inch lift block. Um, so it gives you two inches in the back, two inches in the front, and it scoots your tires two inches forward. So that'll uh, end up looking nice. But uh, I really never gave you guys a true deep, you know, walk around of anything. Um, I do want to get this door buffed. Let's see here. Oh. These LED lights work on the doors. Um, here is this. Make sure there's no confidential information here showing. I found out. Um, this thing has had some pretty extensive work done. So this is from Gale Banks in 2006. It had a Banks power pack installed, which totaled out to be like 4,800 bucks. And I think that's a that's the full Banks exhaust, um, the intake, the the turbo, um, the just on the pillar over here. I don't know what else. Actually, I never noticed this thing is. Oh, okay. There we go. Good to go. So it had that installed in 2006. These people spent insane amounts of money to keep this thing. This is from a receipt from 2023 for 3,500 bucks, basically. Let's see. This one. Trans stabilizer. That, that thing that I um, welded in the front end, apparently right here, the noise, you can see right here, the track bar link. I knew it was already welded, and apparently this is when they welded it. Um, Here's another one for 2,500 bucks. This one was uh, gaskets, injectors, misfiring, cylinder eight, you know, whatever. This one was for 3,500 bucks too. I figure I'd, uh, oh look, 7.3 excursion. Um, I figured I'd show you guys underneath of how clean this thing really is. Like I said, there's there's some salt on it now because I drove it up to the car wash the other day. But there's no rust. You know, it's... I don't know if you guys can see these banks. Uh, I want to say that's probably for the trans tuner. 
that Banks uh, plug in there. Um, yeah, really the only rusty piece in here now is this rear axle because it's from Ohio. Everything else is uh, California. So, yeah, like I said, no rust anywhere. Any of that foot and stuff. And then uh, another thing that I realized I didn't kind of really cover um, was I can start it with the key now. I replaced the neutral safety switch. Let's see here. I replaced the neutral safety switch and I didn't fix the issue. Um, I hooked up Forescan and for you Ford guys out there, Forescan used to be able to get on your on the app store and you really can't anymore. Apparently due to the whole Russia van thing. Um, but you can still, you can pay a direct website and if you have an Android, you can still download it. So I ended up hooking it up um, and it said transmission, like shifter, selector or whatever, like misaligned or whatever. So I assumed it really was a, a uh, neutral safety switch issue, but it ended up being, there's a little green wire going from the ignition um, down and, and somebody cut it. It was like clean cut. So rewired that together. Um, I use these, I don't know where they are. I have the little, uh, you know, uh, I guess connectors that you heat them up and they end up soldering the wires together. So I did it the right way. Um, four wheel drive works, popped right on, goes in. Like I said, heated seats, everything else works. This all still works good. Um, you know, the power, uh, <laughs> power pedals. Let's see here. Let me take you guys on a cruise so you can see how she, uh, how she sounds. It's got a lot of intake noise, a lot of turbo noise. I did put on the uh, the Dodge Roll, we call it the BFF for the big freaking filter. Um, but let's see here. Hope you guys can hear how good it sounds. But I mean, it runs smooth, um, steers great. Like I said, I really everything is kind of, uh, yeah, here's that, another 7.3 excursion. I've heard this guy cruising around the neighborhood. Gotta let him know mine's faster, you know? <laughs> but uh, these gauges work too, the EGTs, when you drive it for a decent amount, EGTs end up going up. Let's see if they can go. Probably not. But, uh, and then this mirror is another thing. I gotta do Super Duty mirrors is, uh, is on the list. So basically, I have a, uh, front LED light bar I need to get the Ford emblem and some Super Duty mirrors um, and then put on my my new uh, put on my new leaf springs but other than that this, uh, this thing's pretty awesome man let's see here Sounds good, drives good. So basically, all said and done, um, I wanna say that I bought the Excursion for about 4,500 bucks. He was asking 65, and the condition it was in, I wanna say that I gave 4,500 bucks. Um, plus, let's say, 500 for for, uh, for body panels. We're at five grand. Um, then we do the grill, like I said, a couple hundred bucks, headlights a couple hundred bucks, um, and the bumper. So let's round that up to maybe 5,700 bucks. Eh, let's say 57 for now. Um, plus the McNasty kit was like six something. So maybe 63, 6,400 bucks. Rear axle was 400 bucks. So transfer case. I'm probably in this thing overall about $7,000. And uh, for those of you who know, <laughs> 7.3 Excursion these days is impossible to find for like under 15 grand if it's not rotted out. And uh, I would say this one is probably a really good example of a very clean one, one that's really been taken care of. 
I have all the maintenance records. Like I showed you guys four or five receipts. I probably have, I don't know, 100 of them, 150. There's probably 30 or $40,000 of maintenance in there. Um, but yeah, I guess that's about, uh, that's about it for this video. I just wanted to, um, you know, get you guys kind of a, a little wrap up shot here. And uh, the next one, once the weather gets warm, will be on the 6x6 Willys Jeep with the Kubota diesel in it. So, it's just been in the garage and it's hard to work in there and it's dark. So, I guess uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. See you guys.